Hello, Studio Art students. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, today I just have a, a lesson about massing. So, in preparation for our longer still life drawing they'll be doing, I want to show you a couple of tricks on uh, how to combine the simple forms together to create more complex ones. Uh, if you kind of are unsure about the forms that we've done uh, last November, please refer to the uh, review video that I have posted on the harbor under our topics page. Uh, okay, so let's begin. Um, let's say I want to draw something that's not quite one of the four forms. This isn't a sphere, it's not a cylinder, it's not a cube, it's not a cone. Um, however, it is a combination of some of these uh, forms. So, um, what I'm looking at here, I'm looking at a cylinder, uh, I'm looking at a tiny cylinder for the top, a sphere for the top of the base, and a cylinder for the bottom. So, um, what I'll be using for this drawing today is a couple of different things. If you do have your art kits, your uh, uh, your two uh, your two B and your six B will be pretty good for uh, the darker tones and the medium tones. Um, if you have your blending stick, that's useful. If not, you can always use a number two pencil um, and a, a napkin for shading. Of course, if you have an eraser, that always helps too. Um, lastly, I'll be using a blue color pencil just to kind of block out the basic uh, forms before I add shading, just to sort of differentiate my uh, initial lines from my shading. So, let's begin. So one of the first things that I want to do is I want to break down this complex form into the simple forms. And what I usually like to do is to draw on the side of the paper um, or on a scrap piece of paper, uh, just what I view as what the forms would look like if I took them apart. So you can see here, I'm adding the little tiny cylinder on top, almost like a little hockey puck. That'll be the mouth of the vase, or vase. And that's it. Now, once I'm happy with that, I can say that this, plus this, plus the sphere, plus the larger cylinder, will equal my complex form. Notice that I'm using uh, my blue colored pencil. That's more just for a visual aid for you students to see the basic lines before I go back over it with uh, the darker pencils. So I plot in my sphere um, and I put my cylinder on top of it. Notice I'm drawing right on top of each form. Um, in fact, I'll even bring the bottom of that top part of the cylinder into the sphere a little bit, uh, and I'll add my little hockey puck on top. All right, next, I will grab my um, 6B pencil, give it a quick sharpen, and uh, I start defining the lines a little bit more. Here's where you'll smooth out some of the rougher edges. So I will uh, curve my line from my cylinder of the mouth of the vase um, into the sphere. Uh, and I'll bring it back around. You should kind of combining these together now before I even start the shading process. Once I finish that, then the shading will begin. All right. Fix that edge a little bit. All right. So looking at the photograph, I'm going to uh, start by adding some of the details. I know that there is a uh, darker glaze at the bottom of this vase, so I'm going to block that in first. Notice I curve the line to match the cylinder at the bottom of the vase itself, and I start blocking in different tones. I'm starting with the darkest side, but I'm not pressing super hard just yet, I'm going to build up the tones. Um, I'm trying to round the top part of the base to make it more spherical, and I'm going to use the uh, up and down shading technique for the cylindrical parts of the base. It's important to keep looking back at your source material, whether it's the actual object with the light on it, or if you took a photo, have the photo readily available, so you can keep referring back to it. Um, you don't want to draw what you think it looks like, you want to draw the actual thing. So here it is, as I'm building up the tones. 
Notice how I'm kind of going back and forth, I'm hatching a little bit. Notice as I hatch, I actually bring the lines in um, a slight curve to sort of mirror the bottom of the cylinder. That ellipses that you want to have throughout. And then, whether you use your blending stick or a tissue or a paper towel, um, doesn't matter, whatever you have readily available, you will start blending it together. Again, like I say in class, it's not just like a one-time one shading and then you're done. You have to build this up over time, so it will take a few minutes. Um, so once you add some shading, you may want to go back in and darken it. Uh, if you get too dark, you may want to grab your eraser and just lighten it in certain spots. You want to continue along that way um, for the duration of the drawing. As you see, I'm not using the top of the blender, the point, I'm trying to use the side so I have more surface area. Uh, now I'm going to block in the top part of the cylinder. This is where that uh, opposite um, shading technique is useful for the inside of the vase. So if you flip the tonal shading to the darker side where the light is on the outside, it'll look more three-dimensional. Here I'm grabbing my regular pencil my HB, uh, your number two pencil. Um, and in fact, if you don't have your art kits, you can use the number two pencil throughout. It's just a matter of how much pressure uh, you put on the darker side versus the lighter side of the form. Um, once I block in those medium grays with the HB, I'm using just a tissue just to kind of blend it out. If you go outside the lines, that's what your eraser is for. You can clean up the edges as you go, or you can wait to the very end and clean it all up at once. So now I'm going back in. Again, I'm trying to, uh, as I go, as I blended out some of the details and some of the hatch marks, I'm gonna bring those back out again to add the uh, texture of the vase. Once I do that, then I'll go back and um, start blocking in some darker tones as well. So I'm looking at the drawing uh, and at the actual object to see where um, the shading actually goes. Um, it kind of curves inward and down, um, so I'm trying to mirror that in my drawing. Now I'll start adding the cast shadow, the shadow coming off the object. I'm also adding the line for the table behind the vase. Um, it's definitely very helpful to whatever object you end up drawing, kind of keeping it close to on a shelf or close to a wall uh, so you can kind of use that um, background or non-background as part of your drawing. Notice how the cast shadow is darkest where it meets the object. So I'm blocking that in, pressing harder with the 6B pencil and blending it out. Um, here I'll use my blending stick, or you can use a paper towel, they really get in there. Um, and I'm blending it out using the side of the top part of the blending stick. Alright, bring it back out a little bit more. You make sure it really gets to a fine point to the bottom of your object. I'm going to add a quick gray shadow for the background, um, the wall, uh, the light is really hitting mostly the vase, uh, so there's a, a bit of a, a mid-tone against the wall. And since I took a photo of my vase on a wooden countertop, I'm going to add some just textural lines around the vase to sort of mirror that, that tabletop. Right now, I want to bring that shadow closer to the vase. Smooth it out. 
Heck, you can even use your fingers for blending. Use my eraser to add a few highlights where the light really shined on uh, the vase itself. I can even use the eraser, the edge of it, to add uh, ellipsy lines to kind of mirror the texture lines I put on the left side of the vase. At the very, very bottom, there's a bit of reflect, re refracted light that bounces off the table and hits the bottom of the vase. You can add that too. Um, and just to sort of keep it consistent, I'm just using the tissue uh, to blend out the background to give it an even gray. And there you have it. Starting with simple forms, you're able to mass them together, build them up together, create more complex ones. Um, what I'd like you guys to do is to try this on your own, whether it's your sketchbook or a plain piece of white paper, whether you have your art kits, whether um, you uh, don't, you can use a, a, a regular pencil, um, and give it a shot, all right? Email me with any questions, and that's it.